knowledge share here today on brief considerations of time series analysis and forecasting. I'll make this fairly brief. I like to break these videos up into small chunks. So um, let's start with what we're going to cover. Uh, we're going to briefly cover what is a time series, what is forecasting, and what's the difference between the two. We'll talk about uh, a few time series examples and then we'll get into basic steps in a forecasting uh, task and we'll look at the components of time series, the basic com core components and then we'll get into ways to approach an analysis of time series or forecasting at a high level and then we'll look at uh, some of my playlist resources I've got some videos on um, uh, open source on time series and then uh, coverage in the next video so we'll do this fairly quickly. Let's just dive in. So what is a time series? So a time series is a sequence of data points, right, that occur in successive order over some period of time. And we'll get into it in just a minute when we talk about some of the examples. But essentially, we normally talking about units of time that are equal. So if you look at the x-axis, those units are going to be equal. Um, not logarithmic or, or something like that. Anyway, um, then the second point is that forecasting is a subcomponent of predictive analytics. So when I want to predict something in the future, I want to predict something that has not happened. Um, that forecasting is one of the types of things that you can do with predictive analytics. And so you're you're making a projection into the future. Uh, based upon some historical events, machine learning, um, AI, some knowledge that you have, um, even subjective knowledge as well. And then uh, time series uh, may or may not include forecasting, right? So why would you do that? So I mean, you think about uh, forecasting, normally you're, you're, that's where the, the, the goal is. You're, you're trying to figure out, okay, if I can predict the stock price or if I can predict, you know, how many customers are coming in or whatever, I, I have a better value on my business. However, you know, sometimes you just want to know what the difference is. Maybe you want to understand your business. For example, um, what's the difference in, of Mondays versus Fridays in, in, in customer flow? Um, you know, what, what are there differences in seasonal patterns? of cost or even um, like people not coming showing up to work between you know in, in the difference between spring and fall um, how can I understand certain components of things uh, better so here's some examples so I just kind of threw these together quickly you know products produced per week energy demand by minute revenue by day GDP gross that's an e economic indicator a gross domestic product per quarter, census per year, um, central processing unit, how, how, how many, many cycles your computer is using, or the amount of memory your computer is using, or, or disk, etc. per second. Um, if you're using Wi-Fi, the megabit you know, uh, rate per, per uh, millisecond over a fast network. Or even exercise hours per day. So, you know, one of the things that you're going to see in every single one of these examples is it's per time unit. In other words, it's really a rate, right? It, it, it's a rate. So you're talking about nanoseconds, milliseconds, seconds, hours, minutes, um, days, weeks, months, years. Um, so all of those are is some sort of time unit, thus time series. And then the, the second thing is all these are equal, right? So a minute right now is equal to a minute in, you know, three years. Uh, so these are equal, equal units of time. And by definition, this is a special type of time series. It's called a discrete time series because every one of those units is equal. So um, quickly, if we look at the basic steps of a forecasting task or a time series task, um, well, this is actually a forecasting task based upon the last bullet. But um, first off is to start with, with the problem at hand, right? And I'm a big Stephen Covey fan, and he always says, begin with the end in mind. 
begin, that means that if you have everything work out the way you want it to, what, where would you arrive? What, what, what would happen? What would you see? What, you know, what goal would you accomplish? Um, so you need to formulate the problem with understanding where you want to go in the end. And if everything goes right, what, what's the aha moment of, of the project itself? And then you get into gathering information. And that could be business on the business side, which is very important. Um, probably the most important, uh, there are more nuances in understanding the business side, right? So understanding are the definitions the same uh, that relate back to the, the problem that you're trying to define? And I might say that these, these are not linear. So you don't do one, two, three, four, five. They're, you know, th there's a general flow, but certainly gathering information is going to play back into the problem definition because the things that you get when you start to talk to people, um, you know, could could affect your the definition of your problem. And then the second part of gathering information certainly is the data itself. You know, what do you have to do to to get the data? Do you even have the right data? That could impact what the problem definition is in the beginning. So again, can be circular in nature. Um, and then the preliminary exploratory analysis that leads to understanding. Um, it leads to problems with maybe data quality. Um, data definitions, etc. So, um, and then once you have that um, and you feel pretty good, you can move forward to fitting models. And uh, and then once you once you get that, you can choose the best model. And that best may not be the highest predictive accuracy because maybe that model is too expensive to actually deploy. Um, so, and by deploy, I mean use. Um, and so you best does not always mean the most predictive or the most accurate. Um, that's uh, sometimes a difficult question. And then using and evaluating the, the forecasting model itself, and that means put it into practice, see how it holds up, see what value you get from the model. Do you need to go back? Um, or can you use that model? And you have to continue to do that over time, monitor that process. And if the model degrades, you have to kind of start over sometimes um, from there. So just some, some considerations. All right, so quickly, some components of time series. These are the, the typical um, ones. Seasonality, and, and seasonality means that it's, um, it's it, rhythmic is, is a good word here. So these are, these are short, they, they, off, they repeat. Um, and so we're, but they're more than, you know, spring, summer, fall, and winter, right? They could even be day of the week, right? So you can see patterns within the day of the week. Maybe Monday is a stellar, if you're selling something, maybe Monday is your highest sales day and then it goes down. Or maybe the opposite, maybe the, the Monday through Friday are, are weaker and, and, and you get most of your sales on the weekend. So, but you're going to see that pattern, right? And that pattern is normally, when we talk about seasonality, it's going to be less than a year. It's going to be something that's fairly rhythmic, um, but it could be, um, yeah, but within that year, it could be repeat, you know, a thousand times, it could repeat four times for the, the seasons themselves. Then you have this trend, right? So it's a longer, longer cycle. Uh, I shouldn't even say cycle. Forget that. It, a trend is something where it's a general tendency, oftentimes we think of trends as being positive, you know, trends, a general trend up or a general trend down. They don't have to be. It could be a, a flat trend as well. But there's something that overall in the data that, that you see, and you can have the seasonality happening many times within the trend cycle. And so these trends could be even what we call piecewise linear, where they, you know, they start to really rise and then they they still rise, but they start to drop down over time. So you see this this piecewise trend, and then cyclical. These are like um, the best example is the business cycle, where you have an occurrence that occurs, um, uh, you know, economically, and then you see a fallout for maybe five to seven years in the business cycle. Um, balloons pops, right? So you get over exuberance in the financial markets, the balloon pops, and then you see reductions of uh, demand and um, 
you know, uh, economic factors that follow that. I won't, I won't say anymore. And then these, these irregular fluctuations as well, right? So that could be, uh, and these are important. So what, what we tend to do, we try to, we try to uh, count mathematically for those first three, and then we look at what's left. And <laughs> if you've done really well in the first three, you're going to have this last thing, this irregular fluctuation, and that's going to exist. And uh, you can't do anything about that, except it's very important to note how much random error there is. Because if you have a lot of signal, if you have a lot of um, signal in those first three, then these irregular fluctuations will be small. That's going to reduce your forecast error quite a bit. The bands that you forecast in are going to be quite small. If you can't account, if whatever you're trying to measure the, you know doesn't have a lot of signal in those first three, then you're going to have wider bands because um, there, there's just a lot of noise, uh, what we call noise in the, in, in the signal. I'm sorry, the noise in the, in the series. Okay, so waste of approach time series at a very high level, um, and we're going to go deeper into this in part two, but you know, one is decomposition, right? So decomposition was what I was just talking about where you take those first three you know, the seasonality, the trend, um, and cycles, and you model for those, and you weight them differently, right? So you, you get that weekend push, you weight those things high, and uh, et cetera. And then we have all of these different time series methods that mathematically we can go through. Um, some are very simple, like, you know, average, um, naive, uh, seasonal drift methods in, in time series. We have what's called... AR, autoaggressive um, time series, MA, moving average, um, and then combinations and iterations of those like ARIMA, um, which are very important, right? So ARIMA has been around for years and years and years. It's very trusted in the federal government. Economic data is often used on that. Um, autoaggressive uh, uh, integrated moving average. And then even seasonal arima and, and additional techniques. Now these techniques, one important part, they're univariate in nature. By univariate means it's using one variable and it's using the past series to predict the future series. So I'm using as much signal as I can get from the past to project what's going to happen in the future. There's another set of methods that I can use and I can use those with correlated or predictor variables. So um, if I'm predicting home sales or something like that, I can use the number of age groups, the people that are coming up through, right? So young home buyers that probably will be ready. I can use economic trends um, if things are going higher. Um, you know, if wages are increasing, people have more discretionary income. They want to, you know, um, go out and buy a house or even subject very subjective factors I can throw in the models as well but that's using like many variables to predict this one variable and neural nets is is an example of that um, uh, splines is is another example of that piecewise linear models and these and there's just tons of them I, I'm just throwing a few out that that I like and and uh, we can go on from there and then one of the other things um, that I wanted to make you aware of is this um, my, my playlist. So I've, I've created a lot of different playlists on uh, different different platforms, different types of analysis. But if we look at this one right here, um, this playlist that's been created, this is basic time series playlist, and this is an R in R studio. So I've created some some YouTube videos in my channel. I mean, if you look at this this playlist, you might want to check that out. Lastly, one of the things that you might want to check out is this um, next video that I'm going to be doing. This is what I'm, I've got planned for the the next one, which is essentially talk about the no free lunch theorem, and then ways to approach time series which I'll go a little bit deeper maybe I'll add a few into the next one as well um, these are the ones that we just talked about I'll talk about platforms and libraries for time series so 
R, there's some, some good packages available. Python has some libraries. Those are open source um, that you can use. Then we can talk about some commercial and even Excel. Excel actually does, if you're doing some very basic stuff, Excel works quite well. Um, and, and I'm a big believer in using what hap what what will work, um, not the, the most expensive or, or you know the most difficult or challenging or whatever, but whatever works. And then um, and then based on that comments um, that I get back, we'll we'll see about one to whether you want me to do a, a part three um, and move forward. So with that, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much.